side and brings the two men together. Mason already being slightly aggressive in the preliminaries, advancing twice towards the corner of Lewis. And nobody's quite sure how the early running will go. Who's going to make the pace? 12 rounds, British and European titles at stake, and world ranking very much at stake. Lennox Lewis in black. He has the reach. He should be able to keep Mason away from him if he uses the left hand properly. And that presumably will be the tactic. Not clear who has the heavier punch. Mason going in with his head down. And told off. Lewis the faster of the two men. Neat little right uppercut from Lewis, and Lewis getting the early accurate punches in. Now Lewis caution for holding. Of the two men, Mason looks the more tense. Lewis pulling Mason onto him, trying to get him close to him where Mason can't exert any leverage. And again, a ticking off. All of Mason's danger lies in big swinging punches, but he needs to be a little bit away from Lewis to get him swinging. It's a promising start. Lewis well covered up with his arms in close. As Mason tries to find his body, Lewis takes him on the arms. That's a beautiful right uppercut from Lewis as Mason advanced, wide open to it. No question at the moment, Lewis has scored all the early points. I think from Mason's point of view how easy Lewis finds him with the right hand Well, that was a very interesting opening round and Mason made a very slow start, and he found himself outboxed. But towards the end of the round, he got a good dig in and slightly restored things. But he was caught very easily indeed with a lot of right hands. He was always, of course, at the end of the left jab, as one expected he would be. But the uh, superior boxing skill and the speed of Lewis certainly won the early points until Mason just uh, towards the end turned it around slightly. And Lennox Lewis, this handsome young man born in Forest Gate in East London and emigrated to Canada when he was nine years old with his parents and uh, was brought up in Canada all his early boxing there and won the Olympic gold medal boxing for Canada in 1988 Hurry, I think both of them were hurt in that round very very hurt this is scheduled for 12 runs Making left hand of Lewis finds its way very easily into the face of Gary Mason. Well, they haven't. 
voice at any time, warming up. That's a good thump from Mason into the ribs of Lewis. That's the sort of punch that will slow him down if enough of them get through. Mason looking just slightly marked around the eyes. He's taken a few left hands. There's Mickey Duff, the manager of Mason, looking slightly anxious. Seeing his man boxed at long range, getting picked off. Lewis has looked the much more relaxed of the two so far. The superior speed and reach is telling at the moment. Mason's going to put his faith here in getting close enough and really go for one hell of a haymaker. Quite solid jabs. Lennox Lewis something to think about he lowered his arms he shrugged his shoulders and I think he was a wee bit hurt A pattern to the first round. Let's have a word from Frank Bruno. Yes, now. Harry. How I do you feel about those two rounds? It's very, very tight two rounds for Gary because Gary's usually trying to use the bombs all the time. Lennox is silky using his jab, and Gary don't need them sort of like jabs in his face all the time because he get very, very cut. But I'm very impressed by Lennox Lewis because Gary was saying a lot of things and a lot of people were saying he wasn't ready, but he looked very, very ready to this me. He's uh, very, very confident there. This is the right yeah. hand that Gary landed. And I think shook Lewis up quite a bit here. Yeah. Here it comes, that one. That was a good punch. Very good punch. I think the first round he got shook more than that round, Harry, you know? Mm -hmm. But both of them are hungry and want it, so it's going to deep down to who wants it more, Harry Hart, you know? Do you agree with me that Lewis looks the more relaxed of the two at the Much moment? more. Gary looks very, very tense, and I think the last fight he had with Pritchard, he hurt his right hand, so he's not using it to the full force, Harry. Mason, of course, last year had serious eye problems and spent some months not knowing whether he'd ever be able to box again. Twenty years ago, this very month, that Henry Cooper and Joe Bugner fought in the same ring, the last fight of Cooper's career. Lewis not moving quite so smoothly now as he was at the start, and uh, Mason's right hand beginning to get through a little more often. Mason's right eye is looking a little suspect. He's got a slight swelling coming up underneath the right eye. And maybe even the start of a swelling under the left as well, and that's obviously the effects of uh, Lewis's left jab. Mason's right eye is beginning to close. That's a good left jab again from Lewis and Lewis. For all the talk about his lack of experience as a pro, he's certainly fighting coolly enough here, but he's hurt again by a right hand, but comes instantly back. This is going to be no 12-rounder. Lewis takes a deep breath. He's beginning to puff a bit already. 
and the arms coming down and looking very ragged. Almost as though... His eyes very cut, and Mason's right eye looking worse by the moment and cut now, there's blood around the right eye. Mason's right eye is seriously hurt. Lewis drops his arms again as Mason's right hand thunders into his head. Mason now, perhaps living on borrowed time, he needs a quick win because that eye is shutting at an alarming rate. Mason needs a KO blow here. Lewis standing there taking these punches, not entirely guarded against them either. And the bell stops the Mason onslaught, and the two of them have attacked each other. They turned, and there was an aggressive move on either side. And Larry O'Connell had to step in pretty quickly there. So there's bad feeling now crept into this fight, which is a pity. And Mason's right eye is in a seriously bad way. And Denny Mancini is the man working on it, trying to get the swelling down. And Larry O'Connell moved into the corner and had a word with Mickey Duff. Cool him down, he said. Let's have a look at some action from that uh, third round because... Uh, a lot of damage was done to Mason's right eye, and that's the sort of punch that did it. And again, the left jab going right through to that side of the face. Second up, round four. Well, this fight has lived up to all the publicity. And one felt towards the end of the fourth that let Lewis was beginning to lose his grip on it. Lewis has such a reach advantage here and so much mobility that he really doesn't need to allow Mason to get close to him. It's almost impossible to get a swelling like this down, and they haven't succeeded. Mason is very close to looking out of just one eye. There is very bad feeling between these two now. There's a bit of taunting going on. Come in. Coming at that point from Lewis. <laughs> and not surprisingly, there's an air of urgency. I won't say desperation, but certainly urgency about Mason's work because he knows better than all of us that his time may be short in this fight. <laughs> Lennox Lewis motioning Matt Mason to come on. I wish he'd get on with the job and concentrate on it instead of uh, doing the needling. He's got enough on his plate with Mason in front of him. And now the man who's picking the other man off. Pace has slowed down considerably. These are two very big men, 16-3 and 16-11. And they can't keep up a fast pace for too long.
and that was a better round for Mason. In fact, uh, Lewis spent most of the time needling Mason and not doing too much work. Would you agree with that, Frank? Yeah, you can say that again. Gary's got to go for the knockout punch, Harry, because that eye won't last um, to the 12th round, you know, and Lewis is just jabbing him, jabbing him all the time, and all he's got to do is run, and he's won the fight, but that eye is very, very, very serious, Harry, you know what I mean? And, like, I don't think it would go on more than three rounds. If they do, it would be a miracle. It's a very, very interesting fight. I thought Gay, at the start of it, he was in favour, you know what I mean? On paper, he's with experience in that, but Lennox is coming much more cooler. But he's tired as well, Lennox. Yes, he is. You know? He's tired early, he, actually, Yeah, very, very early, you know? I think with the pressure and the tension, this is a big fight for him, you know? Back and forth from different countries and that. But it's a very intriguing fight, Harry. Right. So there's no telling, really, at the moment, which way it might swing. I think no you've got telling. to go for Lennox Lewis, because as long as he stays out of the way, keeps on touching up Gary's face with his left jab, you know, into the eye, I don't think that'll last much longer. If Gary can get up in with his big swings, but he's looking slow well, himself. Now. Right. And Lewis goes to work immediately with a big right. Didn't really concentrate on his work too well in the fourth, and maybe they've told him about it. And he's come out looking a little more efficient. These two are splitting 276,000 pounds tonight, equally. Both champions. Had one been the champion, the other just the challenger, then it would have been split 60-40. Lewis's mouth looks quite uh, marked. His box open mouthed all the way through and the lower lips beginning to look as though it's injured. Mason trying to peer through this swollen eye, showing a lot of courage here, coming forward and trying his best here to get rid of the younger man. <laughs> Lewis not really using his advantages again, not using his feet. He's standing within range of Mason's big punches. Earlier on, he was either circling away, well out of reach, or else coming in very close and claiming Mason. This is really becoming quite a brutal fight. Neither man has found the one really big punch that could turn the fight. All those are going through to the head of Lewis. He shrugs his shoulders again, he smiles. He seems, Lewis seems to have made up his mind that he can take any punch Mason cares to throw. Lewis's arm's coming down again, he's clearly tired. And there's a long, long way to go, providing Gary Mason can keep seeing out of the right eye. Actually, it doesn't look quite as bad now as it did before the corner had done a good job on it. Lewis unmarked, as far as we know. 25 years old, brought up in Kitchener, Ontario. And meanwhile, in the other corner, Denny Mancini. Still working as hard as he knows to try to ease the swelling down, to get the eye open again. Larry O'Connell's in there having another look. Mason did a lot of good work in that last round, and uh, Lennox Lewis allowed him to get this close where he could work and get some leverage. Ten seconds. And Larry O'Connell's had a long talk with Mickey Duff in this corner, and I think he may be saying something to him, like we'll give him another round and see how he goes. Because uh, Mr. O'Connell clearly has to 
watch that eye very, very carefully. Particularly in view of the trouble Mason has had with retina problems. Mr O'Connell keeping himself quite cool, but uh, he's having to work hard to keep this contest under control. The piercing left jab again, spearing its way into the battered face of Mason. And a good short, sharp right from Lewis. And Mason had better find a knockout punch pretty quickly. working too hard Looking pretty weary, and it's hardly surprising the way they've been at each other now for nearly six rounds. And Mason had to back off and stop attacking because of the punches coming his way. He tries again to force his way inside. But I wonder if I sense a touch of despair in Mason's work now. And again, he's picked off with sharp, piercing, cutting punches. The left jab of Lewis has been the key punch. And Mason's beginning to take too many punches in that battered face. Mason's right eye is now certainly totally shut. Larry O'Connell had a good close look at it there, and I think he's going to have to make his mind up pretty shortly whether he allows this to go on. And Mason's got some blood on the left eye now as well. I'm not sure that he's cut there, but there's certainly some blood on Mason breaks off and looks a woeful and dispirited and weary figure as he goes back to the corner. And he is cut on, on the left eye as well. He's got too much damage now. And Mr O'Connell is marking his car, but he's going to walk into that corner in a moment and give himself a close-up of these injuries. Is he going to let, is he going to let Mason continue? These are the Lennox Lewis jabs, which have wreaked havoc in the face of Mason. And really did more damage in that round, perhaps, than they've done at any other time. Mr. O'Connell has walked to the corner and walked away again. So he's coming out for this round. Not much longer, Harry. Round seven. Mason looks like a man working in slow motion now. I don't know how long his courage can sustain him here. He's taking too much and he's badly hurt. He screwed his face up in pain and I really do think this is going to have to be brought to an end in a minute. But Mason is having one last desperate go in round seven. He's putting everything into a do-or-die effort. And it's pulled off. That was the last fling for Gary Mason. And the sympathetic O'Connell puts his hands around the battered head of Mason and says, you're not going to take any more, son. And that's right enough. And so Lennox Lewis is being joyously proclaimed now the British and European champion. He marks up his 15th successive professional win. He's proved himself the better man on this night. And in the other corner, 
a battered, bewildered and totally downcast Gary Mason, who gave his best and towards the end he gave his all, but the damage was just too great to bear. That was the start of the trouble, a big right hand near the beginning of this seventh round. And there was one punch here that went right was the one, and that was really the end of Gary. He screwed his face up in pain, and it really might have been stopped there. But Mason had one more tremendous fling to try to bring it to an end. But it was all too much for him. And so, the great battle has been resolved in the seventh round. And as we come back live to the ring, so Lennox Lewis is being proclaimed the British and European champion. A young man on his way now to international riches. Frank Bruno, what do you make of all that? He showed he very he came out very very slick very slick using his left hand all the time against Gary Gary was just looking for the big punch all the time and he was just look look very very sluggish like he'd been in the six round fight previous to that Harry but he couldn't take nothing away from him. It was 14 fights British well, European you can't give him great respect great. Harry give a lot him respect. of potential there too I think yeah you can. could say so right he's got to calm himself down and his aggression coming in and that sort of thing but he done very well Harry sort of fighter you fancy taking on you never know, Harry. You're not, I mean, I'm not going to give nothing away, but you no, never I know. No, I knew you wouldn't. You never know, Harry. <laughs> All right, Frank. What a fight right. it will be, Harry. <laughs> it would that. You draw a few bob with that one. You can say that again nearly as much as you, Harry. Oh, that'll be the day. <laughs> <laughs> so the scenes of Wembley. Mark, the rise to stardom of a new man, Lennox uh? Lewis. I have to say that <laughs> in the several years I watched him as an amateur winning gold medals in have the Olympic taped, Commonwealth have Games, it taped, have it taped. I always right. felt that uh, he might one day really become a great professional. He hadn't made quite as much progress as we thought he should, but tonight he's proved.